Hey, this is Jeremy Hewlett here with a new video for my channel, The Unsupervised Learner. And this video is going to cover logistic regression. So here's the contents of the video. First, I'm going to talk about what logistic regression is and what is it used for. Second, I'm going to talk about why linear regression can't do what logistic regression can. Third, I'm going to talk about the log odds transformation, why it's important, how it's done. And then fourth, I'm going to talk about the maximum likelihood process and give an overview of how that algorithm algorithm works within logistic regression. Okay, so what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is a machine learning algorithm designed to make binary predictions. That's going to be your ones and zeros, your yeses or nos, your true or falses, etc. And the output of logistic regression is a predicted probability. That's going to be its value between zero and one. I think that's important to note because a lot of software will output values of one and zero for logistic regression, but the actual raw output of the algorithm is a value between zero and one. That value being interpreted as the probability of belonging to one of the classes. So let's say you have logis a logistic regression output of 0 0.86 for something. That means that there's an 86% chance of belonging to one of the two classes. And then you can just subtract 0 0.86 from one to be able to get the probability of belonging to the other class. Okay, so why can't linear regression be used to make binary predictions? Well, it actually presents a lot of big problems. And I'm going to talk about a couple of those problems here so that we can start to develop an intuition as to why we need something other than linear regression to make binary predictions. Something like, for example, logistic regression. Here we have an example of some binary data on a chart. On your y-axis, you have whether or not someone owns a mansion. On the x-axis, you have somebody's income. And the red and green dots are the data. You can see that the data only take one of two values, zero or one. Red dots being sorry saps like me that don't own a mansion, and the green dots being people who do own mansion. Now, if we were to fit a linear regression to the data, it would look something like this. Linear regression is all about residuals. And one way that you can tell whether or not a linear regression model is doing a good job is by looking at its residuals. The residuals for a good model should be randomly distributed and centered around zero. Here are the residuals for this model. As you can see, definitely not randomly distributed. It's actually two perfect lines. And anytime you fit a linear regression to logistic or to binary data, more like, you're going to have these two perfect lines because you're subtracting one of two constants from a perfect line. So the residuals are telling us that this model is doing a really bad job. But there's actually more problems that we're going to talk about in addition to the residual issue. Here's our linear regression model without the data. Now we want to be able to interpret the output of our model as the probability of owning a mansion. But we run into a few problems here. Our linear regression model goes below zero and it goes above one. Now we know that a value that's below zero is actually, cannot actually be a probability. It actually violates the, the first axiom of probability, which is that a probability has to be a real number greater than zero. And it's also hard to interpret what a probability greater than one means. So we have two problem areas here highlighted in yellow. So we could potentially put some kind of like a bound on our linear regression where we say anything that's below zero, just make it zero. Anything above one, make it one. And that'll make our residuals look like this on the left. But that still obviously is not making a good model. Also, you really don't want to use a heuristic like capping and flooring the output of a linear model um, if there's anything else that you can do. And in this case, you can use a different kind of regression or logistic regression or a different kind of model to solve this problem. And like I said, the residuals are still looking weird. This isn't solving the problem. So the root problem as to why linear regression doesn't work for binary data is that the range of binary data is not equal to the range of a line. So the range of binary data is between 0 and 1, and the range of a line is between negative infinity and positive infinity. But if we want to make some kind of a linear model that does a good job at predicting binary data, we need to be able to reconcile the differences in those two ranges. How do we do that? We do that using transformations. So I'm going to talk about the log odds transformation, which is used to transform the range of a binary variable from 0 to 1 to negative infinity to positive infinity. In this example, y is going to be our binary response variable. So the first step is to transform y to y over 1 minus y. Since y only takes on two values, it's easy to see how this transformation impacts our range. 0 over 1 minus 0 is still equal to 0. Whereas 1 over 1 minus 1 is approximately equal to infinity. So after this transformation, the new range of our data is 0 to positive infinity. Now our data after the first transformation has a range of 0 to positive infinity. That's halfway to our goal of having a range of negative infinity to positive infinity. 
Now we take the log of y over 1 minus y. Let's see how that impacts the new values in our new y over 1 minus y transform data set. The log of 0 is approximately equal to negative infinity, while the log of infinity is approximately equal to infinity. So now after the log of y over 1 minus y, our new range is negative infinity to positive infinity, which is what we were trying to get in the first place. The transformation of the log of y over 1 minus y is known as the log odds transformation. But where does that name come from? Well, we know that logistic regression outputs a probability. So for this explanation, we're going to say that y is a probability and is equal to p. The formula to convert a probability to an odds is p over 1 minus p, which is the first step in our log odds transformation. The second step, of course, is to take the log of p over 1 minus p or the log of the odds, since p over 1 minus p is the odds. So that's the origin of the name log odds. Here we have our original untransformed data. And here we have our data after the log odds transformation. You can see that all the values are now either negative infinity or positive infinity. Now we can't fit a line to this and minimize the residuals because all of the residuals are infinite. And that's true no matter what the line looks like. The maximum likelihood process solves this problem. The maximum likelihood process starts by creating a line through the data. It then projects the infinite data points onto that line. This first step gives us finite y values for each data point. The first step in the maximum likelihood process gives us finite log odds values for each data point. Here's the example data in a table. The next step is to convert the log odds back to probabilities. This is done by using this formula, e to the y over e to the y plus 1, where y is the log odds value of each data point. Here are the probabilities calculated using that formula. These probabilities represent the probability of being a 1, or in this example, owning a mansion. The maximum likelihood process uses the probability of belonging to the correct class as its inputs. So for zeros, that would be the probability of being a 0, and for 1s, that would be the probability of being a 1. So if the correct classification is a zero, we subtract that probability from one. If the correct classification is a one, we don't do anything. So here we have a list of the probabilities of belonging to the corresponding class. As a side note, here are the limits to, com to, to convert the log odds back to a probability, or more like the limits of the formulas to convert the log odds back to a probability. You can see that the data is bound by zero and one. The second step in the maximum likelihood process gives us a predicted probability for each data point of belonging to its corresponding class. The third step in the maximum likelihood process is to calculate the likelihood. The likelihood is simply the product of the predicted probabilities from the second step. In this example, the likelihood calculates to about 4%. Multiplication here is used as an aggregation method, being used to measure how high all of these numbers are collectively. The higher the likelihood, the better fit the line has. The goal of the maximum likelihood process, as implied by the name, is to find the highest likelihood possible. The next step in the maximum likelihood process is to make an adjustment to the line in an attempt to improve the likelihood metric. There's no closed form solution for finding the maximum likelihood, so that means that the algorithm has to iteratively search for it. Here's our original line. The algorithm will iteratively make adjustments to that line until it reaches its stopping criteria. Once the algorithm stopping criteria is met, the line with the highest likelihood found in the search will be used in the model. The best line that the search algorithm finds is then used to calculate predicted probability. Here's the best fitting line from our example in the log odds scale. We simply use the formula that we've already covered to convert the log odds into probability. And here's what our logistic regression model looks like on the probability scale. This S-shaped curve asymptotically approaches 0 as x approaches negative infinity, and it asymptotically approaches 1 as x approaches positive infinity. So this model will never give us a prediction that's outside of the bounds of probability. Here's a quick summary of the maximum likelihood process's step. If it's the first iteration, it creates a starting line and then projects points onto it. If it's not the first iteration, it takes the adjusted line from a previous iteration and projects points onto that. It then takes those projected points and calculates the probability of belonging to the correct class. So that's the probability of being a zero for a zero and the probability of being a one for a one. It then calculates the product of all of the probabilities from step two. 
Then it strategically adjusts the line and goes to step one unless the stopping criteria has been met. If the stopping criteria is met, it returns the line with the highest likelihood to be used in the model. I compiled a list of natural next questions that I think doing research on could really deepen your understanding of logistic regression. I hope to make videos of these in the future, but in the meantime, there's plenty of content online for you to be able to research to answer these questions. The first question is, how does logistic regression include more features? In this video, we only talked about simple logistic regression where we had one continuous feature, income. But logistic regression can take on multiple features, including categorical and continuous features. So what's the math behind that? How does logistic regression do that? How is the accuracy of a logistic regression model measured? How do you interpret and understand the significance of different features in a linear regre logistic regression model? I talked about how logistic regression outputs predicted probabilities and not categorical predictions, but a lot of times we want categorical predictions. So how do we take those predicted probabilities and convert them into categorical? Logistic regression can also predict multiple categories, not just binary data. So what's the math behind that? How does logistic regression do that? And then which algorithm is used in the adjustment of the maximum likelihood process or the adjustment of the line in the maximum likelihood process? How do those algorithms work? Um, that was my biggest question when I first learned about logistic regression is actually how, how are those adjustments made? What are the details of the stopping criteria and the adjustments for uh, making that adjustment to the line to search for a higher maximum likelihood? Um, and uh, I'll just give you a hint that SKLearn gives six different choices. LBFGS is the default algorithm, but there's a lot of research that you could do there. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you have a better understanding of what logistic regression is and how it works. Go ahead and subscribe if you want more videos like this on other data science and data analytics related topics.